Hi, I'm Matthew Pfeiffer. I'm presenting an uh, interesting case today for you. It's a proximal hamstring avulsion repair that I did. I also augmented this with leukocyte-rich PRP, thrombin from the thrombinator, as well as amnion. So this patient is a 70-year-old, very active male. He was working on his boat. He tripped. He did the splits. He felt immediate pain and a pop in the posterior aspect of his thigh, and he was not able to ambulate because of the level of his pain. He was referred to me after an MRI showed that he had a proximal hamstring tear. That's all really that he knew at that point. He comes to me in the office. When he presented to me, he was in a wheelchair. He was not able to ambulate or put weight on that extremity. He had extensive ecchymoses on the posterior aspect of his thigh that went from the gluteal fold all the way down to the posterior aspect of his knee. He was very tender to palpation on the proximal hamstrings on the ischial tuberosity area. He had pain with attempted flexion of his knee. He was able to extend it, but he was not able to flex it with any force. He was neurovascularly intact distally, but he did complain of some numbness on the plantar aspect of his foot. Otherwise, his medical history was pretty non-contributory. Like I said, he was a very healthy guy. Here we can see the image of his MRI. Uh, first thing that really stands out is the notability of the right from the left. You can see that very large hematoma in the posterior aspect of the thigh. As we scroll through his MRI, you will see not only the sciatic nerve, but what's right next to it is that proximal hamstring rupture. Once I measured this out, I could see that the hamstrings were ruptured and retracted, all four of them, over four centimeters. This patient's diagnosis is a proximal hamstring tear and avulsion of all four of his hamstrings. He had over four centimeters of retraction down his thigh, and he also had some of that sciatic nerve symptoms as well on his plantar aspect of his foot. Because of all this, it adds up to a wood grade five, and the five is a B because of the numbness on his foot. Treatment indication for this would be a proximal open hamstring repair due to the retraction and I also augmented like I said with leukocyte rich PRP I also used thrombin from the thrombinator and I also used amnion and we will discuss all those as we continue so initially for the surgery this was an open gluteal fold approach with about four centimeter incision I was able to palpate the sciatic nerve and then I found the stump of the hamstrings once I had the stump of the hamstrings I delivered it out into the incision I then cleaned off the ischial tuberosity and got rid of any remaining fibers, and I cleaned off the proximal tendon. At this point, I then placed five 4.5 millimeter biocomposite double-loaded suture anchors in a star-type configuration. After I had the suture anchors placed, I then passed them through the tendon. I did this in the same similar anatomic star configuration. I passed four in the center, and I passed all four on the peripheral and each four of the corner. So this was 20 sutures in total, so you have to be kind of mindful of where you place these so you have enough surface area. Once these were placed and be ready to tie, before I did tie them down, I then injected some of the PRP with the thrombin from the thrombinator on the footprint of the ischial tuberosity. I then proceeded to tie down every single one of the sutures. After that, as we all know, the sciatic nerve is right next to those hamstring tendons. The sciatic nerve can be very irritated by this repair from the healing process, so I decided to lay down a strip of amnion between the repair as well as the sciatic nerve. Now with respect to the closure, this is a very important part of this procedure as well. As we know when we're operating on the posterior aspect of the thigh and the gluteal fold, it is not the cleanest place in the body. So we have to be very meticulous and try and reduce as much chance of infection as possible. I closed the skin with a 2-0 uh, Vicryl layer for the dermal layer. I then did a plastics closure with 4-0 Monocryl. And then in addition to that, I placed Jumpstart dressing. What Jumpstart is, it is a dressing that has beads of zinc and silver embedded within it. And when this is wet, there is a microelectrical current that will do two things. It will promote healing as well as provide antimicrobial protection and reduce bacterial load. This is very important for this part of the body with it being in the very not very clean place. Once I was done with the jump start, I then put a waterproof foam tape. This is a very nice type of bandage that allows patients to shower the night of surgery and it keeps kind of everything in and protects it as well. Postoperatively, what I do is I put the patient in a range of motion brace of the knee and I did not allow him to extend the last 30 degrees. I made him non-weight bearing. I put him in a rolling knee scooter. These are very nice for patients because you're able just to put all the pressure on your knee and your femur. You are not holding your leg up at all as if you would if you were on crutches. I also gave uh, aspirin 325 daily for DVD prophylaxis as well due to the being non-ambulatory on that leg. He came in for his first office visit. He was 11 days out. He was doing great. He had some mild discomfort, but his pain was much improved. 
He only took narcotics for one day after surgery, and then he went to over-the-counter Tylenol. His incision looked great. It was very clean. There was no drainage. As you can see, here's a picture here of the Steri strips over top of it. At this point, for weight bearing, I progressed him to weight bearing as tolerated. I did keep him in the brace, and a nice effect also was the numbness improved on the plantar aspect of his foot, noting that the sciatic nerve did not have the tension of it being pulled down from the retracted tendon, and it was happy again. He came back in again for his second office visit. This was six weeks out. He was once again doing very well. He was taking no pain meds, not even over-the-counter Tylenol at this point. I sent him to physical therapy for progressive strengthening and stretching, and my regulations for him is he was not allowed to run, jump, or do any aggressive knee flexion for three months. Thank you.